have us going on YouTube. Appreciate the love and support. Make sure you hit the like button, share button, and subscribe button. In this video, I'm gonna talk to you guys about body-worn cameras in law enforcement. I don't have a story to go with the cameras or anything like that, but I do want to discuss and talk about, you know, basic features about them because we all know video proof can't really fake that shit. You can't really deny video proof. You know, nowadays everybody be talking about, oh, pull, pull the receipts, got the receipts. So, boom, that's the receipt right there in 4K. You can't deny it. So body cams, they could go either way. You know, if you're, if you're in law enforcement, if you're a police officer, and somebody's trying to file a complaint against you, somebody's trying to say you assaulted them, you did this, or you harassing them, whatever, whatever, and you keep your body cam on, and you're gonna be all right. You know, you're gonna go through internal affairs, they're gonna show you, you're gonna look, run the camera back. I never even, I don't know who the fuck that person is. And vice versa, um, if you're a civilian, if you're in the public, and we've seen things like this <clears throat> a lot of times throughout the years where um, a lot of body cams, sometimes they won't be on. Sometimes police officers they won't they won't keep the camera on or they'll turn the the camera on at a certain time or turn it off at a certain time. That's why you know that's why media has a real big impact on the on the things that we see. Where it's kind of like you turn on to Fox, you're only going to see the last thirty seconds of an incident, but then you're going to see and then you're going to you're going to see the first thirty seconds of the incident. So you're not going to see the full story. But again, that's the thing with the body cam. It's all about covering yourself and just to make sure you're doing your shit properly. Now, I just want to add this in. As far as all my videos with law enforcement and my perspectives and giving you guys advice for the academy and things like that, please keep in mind. Like I hope I hope you guys have gotten something out of it. Even if you're not trying to get into law enforcement, I hope that you've heard something that I said. It was like, huh, I never thought about it like that. That's a different perspective. Now, like, like that's what it's all about. And you guys got to understand, I enjoy doing this shit. I enjoy talking about these types of things because these are these are the conversations that don't really happen a lot you know unless you have somebody in law enforcement a boyfriend girlfriend dad mom uncle whatever whatever that's going to tell you stories or tell you like hey yeah when i was when 35 years ago we would have done this like if you have people like that who are going to help you it's going to make your time a little better i didn't have that i didn't have people trying so i kind of really had to figure out and learn things on my own once somebody retires, once somebody's old, a lot of those things, a lot of the old police stories, and they kind of, they keep it with the brothers or they keep it with the family. They keep it like, they're not going on YouTube and just saying, yeah, prepare for this. Hey, do this. This is what's going to happen. Yeah, you may have to go through this. This is what I want. I know there are probably some pages and police officers around, whether they're on duty or off duty, because I've seen them. I've seen niggas on TikTok on duty talking about, yeah, you guys, blah, 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 this and that. But we got to talk about everything. If we're going to talk about law enforcement, we got to talk about everything. And that's one new reason Nick is here. Right, so I don't have a camera with me. I wish I did just to make it a little easier. But body cam that we used was kind of like an Axon, I believe the name was. Pretty much a square. A square camera just like that. You have a magnet. A magnet plate that you stick it into your vest. There's a little sleeve that you can stick the magnet into your vest. You put your vest on. You put your shirt over your vest, obviously. So, well, not obviously because some guys wear the vest over their shirt, whatever, whatever. But <laughs> you got the plate in your vest and then you got the camera, li literally that size. Camera just boom, hooks on right there. You can put it anywhere on your shirt. Obviously you wanna have it right there. That way you can kinda of just get the whole perspective of what's going on. Um, so the camera, about that big. On top of it, there is a switch, on and off switch. You switch it to the left, on. You turn it to the right, off. When it's off, there's no light. When it's on, there's going to be a little red light that's going to be showing. That obviously shows that the camera is on. It's on, but it's not recording. It's not doing anything right now. It's just on. So the camera's going to be on a buff mode. As soon as you turn it on, it's going to be on a buff mode, which means it's on a 30 second loop. It's not recording. There's no audio, which means after every 30 seconds, it's just re-recorded. The policy, we were told, and keep in mind, that first year that I was a police officer, nobody cams. Class two, we did not have any body cams. Full-time guys, they all had their body cams, but I didn't get my, my, my body cam until my second year. What the policy was, you're given the camera. As soon as you got the camera, you turn it on. In road call, as soon as you get in the car, turn it on. Put that red light on, keep that shit on loop mode, the buff mode, whatever. The 30 second loop, you're gonna keep that shit on. The second you receive a call, over your radio, you're supposed to double tap the camera. There's gonna be a circle, there's a circular button 
on the camera, right underneath the camera, the lens and everything like that. I'm gonna post a picture that way you guys can have a better understanding. It's gonna be a circular button. The second, whether you get a call that's dispatched over the radio, whether you're walking on the boardwalk, walking on the street and somebody flags you down like, hey, I just got fucking robbed, blah, blah, blah. The second there's a call or something like that, you're supposed to, technically you're supposed to, beep, 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 double tap, and that's when the camera's on. That's when everything's live. It's no more 30 second loop. You got full audio, you got full uh, video, obviously, but that's when you're on. You know, the red light's gonna be blinking, just like blah, 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 this and this and this. That's when you're on. The thing about the body cams was, not a lot of people kept them even on buff mode. And I'm not gonna lie to you, there were sometimes I wouldn't keep my shit on buff mode because it was kind of like a, are they listening to what the fuck I'm saying? Because you don't wanna be in the car talking shit to your partner, talking shit, whatever, whatever, it gets caught on camera. And then at some point down the road, maybe if you gotta go to court or, you know, your sergeants are just doing a, a, a random, you know, body cam check, they're gonna be like, yo, what the fuck? Why is he talking like that on camera? He can't do that. Like, nah, you're gonna get in trouble for that. So a lot of people wanna keep their body cams on. Whenever you're done with the call or talking to somebody or whatever, whatever you're doing, that same button that you double tap to turn the camera on, you just hold it. You just press the button down, hold it, and it's gonna like beep once or twice or whatever, and the light's gonna turn from red to green, back to like the buff mode, back to the... So I had an instructor in the academy who, he would always talk to us about a situation he was involved in years prior without ever getting into the details or telling us a story about everything. Um, but he would always end the, end, the, end the conversation with, body cam saved my life, it saved my career. They didn't tell us what the story was. Pretty much the story was in 2014, him and two other officers, they were on duty, patrolling, whatever, whatever. Dude standing around. They try to stop him. He ends up running. They chase off after him. He ends up falling on the ground. They jump on top of him. During that whole scuffle, I'm not even going to say scuffle, they beat the shit out of him, man. They paralyzed him. They paralyzed him. This was in 2014. I went to the academy in 2017. Yesterday... May whatever of 2022, man wins a $10 million settlement from the police department. Mind you, he's still paralyzed from this whole situation eight years ago. Now, the settlement and the lawsuit claim that the officers that were involved, first it was police brutality, and the second thing, well, not the second, there's probably other things, but police brutality and that the officers did not render proper aid to him after the, after the beatdown. And that's one thing you're going to have to learn and they're gonna teach you that shit in the, in the police academy if that's the route you're gonna go. No matter the situation, if you see somebody's hurt, if you use force yourself or your partner uses force or something and somebody needs it, call for backup, call for an ambulance. Even if it's like a domestic and you're dealing with some lame ass, fuck ass dude that's just beating on his girl and shit like that and he may need, maybe he got a bloody nose and he got like, she hit him with something and you kind of don't want to help him. You kind of feel like, bro, like you really are lucky. I'm not fucking you up. I'll call an ambulance for you. I got you, bro. You always got to just cover your ass. Just cover your ass. Also, if there's situations where, and again, this is they will teach you this shit. They taught me this shit. If you go, if you arrive on a scene, you arrive to a, a, to a shooting. You see a guy who's shot dead. He's fucking got 50 bullet shots all over his body. You know he's dead. You know he's not. You know he's dead. You better be on the fucking ground giving CPR. You better be screaming like, oh, I need you better be on that radio, on that dispatch calling for an ambulance. Don't just get caught bullshitting with your arms folded like, what the fuck am I gonna do? Like, he's already dead. Like, what? You don't wanna get caught like that. And that's what our instructors, they would always tell us. It was like, yo, and nowadays with surveillance, with body cams, with cell phones. Last thing you want to get put on is on YouTube standing around a dead body with your arms folded because pff, fuck am I going to do? Don't want to get caught like that. And we've seen it. You see a lot of bum-ass police officers get caught in situations like that because they just don't give a fuck. So the man wins a $10 million settlement. You know, he's still paralyzed, which is fucked up. Um... Not really sure the status of the officers. I think two of them are still working. But body cams, man. Body cams. Big brother watching. 
Big Brother watching you in 4K and, and the surveillance, there's cameras everywhere. That's why that shit still really be crazy to me when you be watching these dudes out in broad day just doing the stupidest shit. No mask, no, like, nothing. Again, this page is not going to promote anything illegal or nothing like that. But sometimes I really sit back and wonder, like, y'all just make shit so goddamn easy. It's like, just turn on Instagram. Crazy. Catch you guys on the next one, man. Peace.